Welcome to this lovely Friday morning and uh, another session in our Coffee Break technology series. Uh, this morning, we're gonna be talking about leveraging outsourced service desk uh, for business productivity. And we've been on an exciting service desk journey here uh, at Elevity. Uh, over the last year, we've substantially grown our service desk team from about five folks to 13 uh, and uh, building out our KPIs and our management around uh, different pods and structure to, to better serve uh, our customers. And so uh, diving into service desk and metrics and approach has been something myself and my team has been, been really uh, excited to uh, continue to leverage and grow uh, here at Elevity. Uh, so thanks this morning for joining us on, on this topic. Uh, I am joined this morning uh, by uh, one of my coworkers uh, and a longtime employee of GFC Elevity, uh, Matt Framar. Good morning, Matt. Yeah, good morning, Paul. Uh, so again, my name is Paul Hager, Director of Solutions here uh, at Elevity. Uh, I oversee the mid-market team as well as our VCIO solution architect and, and ultimately our engineering group. Uh, Matt's part of uh, our excellent group of virtual CIOs and he covers the uh, Appleton and Madison area uh, for uh, some of his uh, virtual CIO accounts where, where he's an outsourced adjunct executive for uh, our SMB accounts. So. Good morning, Matt. Why don't you give yourself a little introduction and, and your many years of service here. Uh, thanks for all of that. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I've been with uh, Elevity and, and uh, uh, Gordon Flash for uh, going on 23 years this summer. Uh, so in that time, I've held a number of roles and, um, you know, been, I would say, blessed to work for such a great organization. And uh, you know, always being given those opportunities to to grow into new uh, new adventures. Um, so my role as VCIO today is to help work with organizations and, you know, ideally, you know, become a part of their their organization and uh, help them with their technology decisions um, and provide that strategic guidance and, and leadership uh, within the within the organization. Right. Yeah, Matt does a, a great job. We, if you're one of our managed accounts, you've, uh, you know, maybe been a part of one of your strategic SBRs, and and we do those those strategic uh, those post SBR surveys. And I know Matt's customers really appreciate his insight. I, I get those surveys. We look through every one of them, and uh, you know, Matt, you do a fantastic job with those. So thanks for spending some time with me this morning and, and talking about. Yeah, thank you. Outsourcing uh, IT end user IT support, right? So obviously we're we're uh, biased or knowledgeable on this topic, depending on uh, your perspective. But uh, we, you know, we're an outsourced IT organization. People uh, typically see the value in, uh, especially in small businesses, where maybe it doesn't make financial sense for them to have a dedicated IT person because it wouldn't fill up their time. Um, but also, you know, we, Matt, you and I, as we meet new new accounts, we meet a lot of folks that wear a lot of hats in those organizations, right? And uh, mm -hmm. You know, often we find ourselves in a in a great position to be able to to help uh, take some of the burden of IT off so that they can they can focus on their their day to day tasks. What are what are some of those common pay points uh, that cause businesses, in your opinion, that you've met uh, over your twenty three years to, to make a change to, to outsourcing end user support? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> one of the one of the big pain points in an organization that I see, especially in the, you know, some of the smaller organizations that we go into and, and start helping um, is, as you mentioned, they've got a guy in house that's wearing multiple hats. And, and one of those is helping to manage and support the IT infrastructure within that organization. Um, you know, because that's not his primary role, oftentimes uh, there's you know, something of a skills gap. Um, it's not his primary position. It's not his training. And so, uh, you know, we'll oftentimes see the issues take him longer, or him or her longer to resolve than, uh, you know, what, what might be desired. Um, also, you know, when there is an IT issue, they might be in the middle of an important project and all of a sudden they've got to stop working on that to 
you know, fix somebody's computer or, you know, get the server back up going up and going, you know, things of that nature. So, um, you know, and, and other things too are oftentimes they like to take vacations. Um, and when they do that, it's, it's hard to get support and, or, or it's hard for them to take a legitimate vacation and be able to really recharge the batteries. So, you know, a lot of times we see in, in those situations, outsourcing the help desk is a great way to be able to provide a high level of care and support to your clients. Uh, and allow your, you know, allow those business employees to focus and work on their primary job functions and objective, objectives. Yeah, what, so, is, what is vacation? When, when are we doing those again? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, even in larger organizations, a lot of times, um, you know, there might be one or two people that are on staff and, and helping out. Um, but they're also doing help desk and, and again, the, the help desk work is taking away from being able to achieve strategic projects within the organization. And so by outsourcing the help desk, it frees them to be able to focus on those things that are really value add and helping to move the organization forward. Yeah, I think it, it makes a lot of sense, right? And this is just one of those things that can get some economies of, of scale um, when you can leverage our our whole team and their their knowledge base and, and some of our tools mm -hmm. have along the way, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, and as, as we keep talking through here, folks, if uh, uh, we do wanna, hopefully you have a cup of coffee on this lovely Friday morning. If, if you don't, we will buy you a cup of coffee. You just gotta hang on till the end. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw up a slide uh, for how to get uh, your coffee gift card. So just hang with us. You do need to fill out a, a quick two question survey here at the end and, and uh, we'll, our marketing department will get that right over to you. So hopefully I uh, have a have a cup, but can uh, can get another. So uh, back to our topic, you know, it, from a from a cost justification standpoint, it, you know, is there a tipping point here to, to outsourcing this part of the business? Is there a number of users or any other component as you're thinking about a TCO? Uh, yeah. So you know, the short answer is yes. Um, so when you're looking at TCO and cost justification, um, there's a number of things that need to be looked at. Um, some of them are, you know, kind of the soft costs um, that take a little bit of time to assess. Um, so when you have your somebody internal that's doing help desk and that's not their primary job function, there's a lot of things, you know, lost opportunities of of productivity that need to be looked at and, and realized and calculated because you're you're losing productivity from that employee uh, because they're being you know pulled away from their primary job function. Um, the other thing to consider is just the amount of time that it takes to resolve an issue. Uh, again, like I mentioned, a lot of times this is someone that's not going to have their you know their their training is not necessarily IT, so they need to spend a little bit more time trying to fix things. Um, issues, you know, are now taking two people uh, from being able to be productive and working with an organization um, to resolve. And, um, you know, if it takes an extra two or three hours to resolve, um, you know, where if they called into a, a remote support desk that's, uh, you know, trained on not only the environment that, you know, our, our customers have, but also, you know, the latest technology and, and things out there. and you know, they might be able to resolve that same issue in, in 30 minutes or in an hour. So, you know, I think I think some of the big, uh, if you're just looking at it straight costs, you know, not looking at some of the other advantages that exist with it, you know, those soft costs are something that you really need to take a look at and take into consideration with it. Great. Yeah, I think those are, those soft costs sometimes are hard, right? Uh, but you know, as we've helped people with TCOs, you, you can take the kind of an estimated fully burden part of somebody's salary and say 25% of their time is spent on help desk or 80% of their time is spent on, spent on help desk related items or issues. You know, sometimes one of our first asks is just write down all the times, start an Excel document, write down all the times you're, you're spending time or being bothered. Now, even if it's just a number of issues, uh, you know, from that list, we can kind of translate into time and and can start to build out that CCO, I think, for folks. Yeah. And if you are that person, that's a, a good exercise to go to or to go with as well, just because a lot of times what we've seen is, you know, uh, decision makers within the organization or, or business owners, 
don't necessarily know how much time you're spending doing those things and you can tell them but oftentimes you know when you can have that proof behind it it helps them to really realize how much uh how much it's taking away from from their business and getting things done yeah yeah agree well, other kind of on that on that theme there of you know if we're talking to maybe a an office manager or a COO and, and there's a CEO or business owner to, to kind of convince here, are there any common misconceptions or object, objections that you encounter around this kind of outsourcing end user support? Um, you know, a lot of businesses probably are concerned a little bit that a, a third party will never truly understand the user's individual day-to-day -day needs or, or understand their business. How does, you know, how do we in our experience and the accounts that you help with as a as a BCIO manage the kind of uniqueness of each client. Yeah, absolutely. That is a common common concern, especially if you're not using an outsourced help desk today. Uh, you know, can can an outsourced you know set of people are they really going to provide the level of support and care that we need? Are they going to be able to understand our organization, our applications, you know, things of that nature? And what we've learned is, you know, most organizations um there's there's certain patterns to them um you know when you take a look at maybe uh some things that i've heard in the past are well we've got this really specialized application and you know we don't think that a, a outsourced help desk would be able to help or support users with it um and you know what they kind of don't necessarily realize and and it's not their fault or anything but um you know that that application was written around a set of standards and best practices that a lot of other applications are are written around and so yeah maybe it is a little bit of a unique application um but it doesn't you know it's not necessarily that special um that we can't take the experience that we have uh with other applications and still you know be able to provide the level of support for it we we'll also invest a ton of time into training and documentation um, and things of that nature so that as we, you know, when we come into your environment, we're going to document those things so that we can learn um, what it is that it's going to take to support your clients and your users. A lot of times in organizations, you know, creates a set of processes and applications and things of that nature. And that becomes their secret sauce to why they're so successful within uh, their market. And we certainly don't want to change that. We don't want to be a hindrance to that. Uh, we want to help embrace that and be a part of that. Um, so that's a big part of it. And, you know, one of the ways that we really help foster that is by using pods uh, for support. So um, all of our clients are assigned to a pod, which is a small group of engineers um, and technicians that are there to support those clients. Um, and they can, um, because they're only supporting a certain set of clients, they're not supporting, you know, every Elevity client, um, they can get to know your business better, uh, get to know your employees. Um, it's nice you know as a as a client i'm sure it's nice to be able to call in and hear a familiar voice um and someone that you know understands what you're doing how you're trying to do it and and the importance of that yeah yeah i think the pods have been uh are an important way for us as we ultimately scale out our our service desk business to make sure that we have you know only a smaller group of individuals uh touching each account they get to know you know some of these unique applications and the people right this is still a yeah a service and a people industry and, and we want to be able to build those relationships and uh, i know the service desk team as we did the pod launch was was really excited about uh, getting their team assignment and, and knowing kind of what what team we can have and we have some fun competitions between our our pod alpha and bravo and uh, about closing tickets and helping customers out and keeping customer satisfaction yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important to to keep in mind too that it's it's different than like if you had to call AT and T or Comcast or you know something like that where it's just a huge support desk, you know, or call center. And every time you call in, you're you know you might get somebody different, even though it's the same issue. And and with the pods, we're able to focus that, and you can get a, a consistent experience that way. And your issues are ultimately going to be resolved faster. So yeah, that is important to note that. You know, scaled out a little bit here. We still are, you know, we still are Elevity, and it's a group of people that are, you know, we got about 60 staff uh, dedicated to Elevity right now, and uh, overall, but uh, you know, we're serving multiple states and are really a, a 
close-knit group and uh, everybody works for a levity and we're able to you know help customize things and work very uh you know work very specifically with each of our clients to address their needs um does as we kind of talked about adjusting to needs uh you know how does our service desk offering vary from company to company do most of our clients uh, allow end users to to call directly into service desk or do they kind of funnel through an individual and what have you seen be most successful uh with our with our clients providing end user support yeah that's always an interesting one um you know there's a lot of different models that are out there and exist and, and here at levity we do still have three models that we offer one is kind of a pay as you go um one is blocks of hours and the other one is just an unlimited support desk option um you know typically what i find is um you know the blocks of hours or the pay as you go you do end up having somebody internally again that's still kind of doing that first tier IT support. So when somebody has an issue, then they have to go to this person to either A, get permission to call for assistance, uh, or that person is going to take a swing at trying to fix the issue. Um, and then when they can't resolve it, then it goes to the help desk. And all that is in an effort to, you know, try and save, save hours uh, and save the company money. Um, it kind of gets back to this, the same issue, though, that you're having with just an internal person doing it in that um, now you're taking two people's time to try and resolve an issue. You're working with someone who it's not their primary job function. Um, and it's just, it's extremely inefficient. Um, the other, um, the other option is, you know, the, the unlimited support desk option. And that's really the model that Elevity is focusing on and, and moving to. Um, it's, it's a great way to be able to empower and enable your employees to be able to just reach out and get support when and where they need it. Um, and the organization doesn't have to worry about, you know, a crazy bill at the end of the month or anything like that. Um, the other nice part about it is it kind of shifts the, the risk of support issues and the cost of that from the organization over to a levity. So when you're doing blocks of hours or when you're doing uh, pay as you go, um, you're, your IT providers, not not specifically levity, but the IT providers, um, you know, motivations and, and things of that nature and your business's um, needs are kind of at this really awkward, um, you know, they're at odds. So basically, you know, if you take a look at it, the, the IT provider, when they're doing blocks of hours or, or hourly, the only time they're making money really is when something's broken. And when something's broken, that means that your organization isn't working and, and functioning in its full full capacity. Um, with the um, unlimited support desk options, um, if there's an issue that we need to, to resolve within a levity, let's say, then it's on us and it's our time and, and it's our resources that need to be invested in fixing that. So, you know, the motivation in that and it, and it the motivation for that aligns with what the organization's goals are, and that is that IT is just up and working and we don't need to worry about it. Uh, and our goal is to also make sure that we're not having to spend a bunch of resources trying to fix issues all the time. If we see something that's a repeat issue, if we see something that, you know, we can proactively address, um, you know, we see that, you know, maybe the battery in one of your UPSs is not at the capacity that it should be and it's gonna start causing issues. We can bring that up to you proactively and get that taken care of rather, rather than waiting for the thing to fail. And then now we've got a, a, you know, scramble to try and take care of it. Right. So the other, the other thing about that shift too um, is, you know, if you do have a bad day, let's say server crashes or, you know, you get ransomware or something like that on the network, um, you know, you can blow your IT budget real quick um, if you're just doing blocks of hours or, or hourly, um, you know, getting a couple engineers on site to remediate all those issues um, it can get costly real fast because your business is up and going. So, um, you know, a big part of what when you get into that unlimited support option, there's a lot of other resources that we at Elevity are going to bring in to make sure that we're preventing that from happening. Yeah, that's an you know an important that really that shift of risk uh, is really an important motivator for 
you know, people really moving to that that all inclusive approach. I know some folks sometimes feel like, well, I wonder if some months if if we don't use it all. And I can tell you, as we we look across all the organization, you know, our clients really do uh, balance out and take advantage of the offering. And uh, there is value in knowing that your you know your costs are can be predictable and really incentivizes yeah. us. Uh, that are in that all in with us and all in our most you know current 3.5 version of our offering and we're spending extra time uh, making sure that those organizations environments are above and beyond because that's really our incentive is to keep your team productive uh, and you know not calling for support uh, I mean we want them to call right if they need help we want them to call. <laughs> Uh, but we don't want, you know, yeah. we also don't want the team down. We don't want that loss of productivity. That's where IT provides a lot of its value back is making sure people can work all the time from anywhere and produce the outcomes that are needed uh, for the organization. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, as we talk about outcomes, uh, you know, service desks, uh, especially when we get to to our scale, uh, they start to really dig into their numbers, right? They start to get into their key performance indicators, their KPIs. Um, you know, what are what are some of the, you know, one of those KPIs that gets talked about a lot is uh, first call resolution. Um, can you talk a little bit about why that's something that we measure and what that means uh, to to folks that might be on this call? What is first call resolution and why, why should a business owner care or ask what a first call resolution rate is for an organization before they outsource? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first call resolution, just, uh, you know, kind of a basic definition. Um, it's pretty much what it sounds like uh, when a user picks up the phone or opens up a chat session or, or even an email um, and they report an issue um, that that issue is able to be resolved in that first interaction with a, a support staff member uh, on the support desk rather than um, you know, that engineer having to do any kind of follow-ups or, you know, having to do research on an issue or, you know, reach out to somebody else to, to get, you know, information to be able to resolve the issue. Um, so it's, it's that metric of you pick up the phone, you call and say, hey, I'm having this problem. And when you hang up the phone, that issue has been resolved and you can go about your day. So, you know, obviously that's real critical because you know the the quicker an issue can be resolved with as few hurdles as possible again it, it's all about keeping your employees productive and getting them back to their job issues are going to happen that's why we we need the support desk and and we'll likely always need them because um things break um or things change you know sometimes it might just be a, a simple setting that needs to be adjusted um so you know we're always going to need them but um, you know, if if we can minimize minimize the amount of time that it takes to go from you know picking up the phone to hanging it up, the again that's just critical to keeping your business functional and, and working at you know peak performance. Um, so, and a lot of you know a levity we invest a lot in document management, um, documenting our clients, keeping that documentation up to date. Um, and training of our employees to make sure that they're, you know, up to date on the latest technology. So we have a pretty high, I think, a really high uh, first call efficiency number. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's a big part why is because of the uh, investment that we make in technology and training and, and our employees. Yeah, yeah, 90, 90, 91 to 92% of the time. Uh, so 9.2 out of 10 times we're, resolving those issues the first time that ultimately keeps the, your staff uh, if you're a client of ours uh, your staff working right so they're not calling back they're not saying oh these repeat IT issues I keep having it and mm -hmm. uh, I call and then they got to call me back three times uh, to finally get it resolved right we want to yeah. make sure get you the right resource and that might mean we escalate your issue right away right we're we're looking at tickets coming into our support desk and we might see that issue and go you know this really needs uh, immediate on-site support and we get that over to that team we're not just kind of we're not just going to put people through oh we got to talk to level one well then we're going to have to take you to level two well, then you're going to have to get to level three we, you know again mm -hmm. it's, we're not the at&t and cell phone call center where you got to <laughs> they're here uh we, we operate with some you know some intelligence and integrity and and understand that 
uh, your time is very valuable and your employees' time is valuable and we need to get everybody back to being productive right away. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I have a few minutes left here. Uh, I want to give people a chance to ask any questions they might have, but uh, maybe a few parting uh, tips or tricks for people to get the best support out of the levity from your perspective, Matt, your over 20 years of, of experience. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, first and foremost, if you're a, a current client of a levity, thank you. We appreciate uh, you working with us and, and allowing us to support your IT needs and, and technology needs. Um, <clears throat> you know, next, I'd strongly encourage um clients to complete the post uh post ticket surveys when those come out um and provide us with you know candid and honest feedback in those um we've made a number of changes as a result of you know feedback that we got from clients and uh we love to learn and, and make sure that we're providing you know world-class support to our clients so uh always uh always appreciate feedback that you can provide um Probably the, one of the biggest things is also to work closely with your, your VCIO. Um, if you are having any kind of support issues or concerns, um, you know, when uh, your VCIO can help, you know, kind of take a look overall what's going on. Uh, if you're not in a version of our support that has a VCIO, please reach out to us. We'd love to, you know, discuss that and, and you know, discuss the advantages of that and see if that makes sense for you. But um, you know, VCIO, in addition to watching out for your, your technology infrastructure overall, um, is really there to help make sure that you're getting the best support possible. Great. Well, do you want to echo that? Appreciate if you are an existing customer joining us this morning. Thank you for your continued trust in business. We uh, truly uh, value it and your time and spending some of it with us on this Friday morning. Uh, we'll uh, give people an opportunity to uh, ask any questions they might have. And meanwhile, go ahead and uh, open up your camera app on your phone uh, or go to this link to, to claim your, your free cup of coffee as a thank you for, for joining us this morning and spending some time with us. So we'll, we'll leave this up and give anybody a chance to ask any questions they may have. Well, again, thanks everybody for uh, joining us this morning and uh, for a little bit of your time and hopefully a, a topic that was helpful, whether you're adopting an outsourced service desk model or thinking about uh, taking that step uh, to fully outsource that portion of, of your IT support. Hopefully we gave you some thoughts or ideas about it. We're always willing to have that, uh, that conversation. Um, if uh, you are a prospect here thinking about making a change from an IT provider perspective, uh, the next step would be uh, diving into one of our technology 360s or T360s. So head over to elevityit.com forward slash T360 uh, or for this event or our longer thought leaderships, as well as some uh, Teams training events that we have coming up, some really exciting stuff coming uh, through with our event and marketing group here. Uh, we're always here to educate and provide content and information head on over to elevity.com forward slash events. We hope to see you at a future event here at Elevity. Uh, thanks, Matt, for joining me this morning. And